what's up and i hope your preparation is going in a full swing now guys in this video we will be discussing all the amendments which has been applicable to your securities market yes so guys in this video i will be discussing all the amendment which is applicable to december 2022 examination so guys if you are appearing for december 2022 then this video is relevant for you before i start with this video let me give you a basic clarification that i will be covering all the amendments which is been given in the icsi supplement so guys institute have already issued that supplement you can go to the website of institute and download the same but guys i have already made that notes for you all guys which will be available in the description box or i will pin comment it so guys also with this i will be writing few things so whatever i will be writing you can write with me or you can just download that file as well i will be attaching that file in the comment section or it will be in the description box now guys before i start do share with all your friends now before we start the amendments my sequence will be i will be starting with very easy chapters first and then i will be taking up the difficult chapters so if you see uh, the very first chapter which is on your screen is icdr so i will be not covering icdr first i will be covering up small chapters but yes equally important amendments and uh, need not to worry if somebody wants to revise or want to see the amendments related to icdr i will be also putting up the time stamp so that whenever you want to revise any concept you can just click on that time stamp and you can skip the video accordingly so guys the very first video what i will be covering up will be not from icdr i am just starting up with mutual fund chapters now you can see there are so many amendments but yes need not to worry i am with you jk shah classes is with you jk shah online is with you so make sure you share with the maximum people now very quickly we'll start with mutual fund so guys we have some couple of good amendments in mutual funds let us without wasting any time let us start with the very first amendment now what is this amendment is all about the very first time it says change we'll go very slow because i am not only teaching the amendment but also you should know how to interpret law after you clear your examination perfect because ultimately you would be not there in the classes i will be not there every time being a professional you should know how to interpret the basic laws now it says change change in what change in the control okay if you want whatever i am writing on this sheet it will be also available so need not to worry about it you can just sit back and enjoy and listen to all the amendments you can listen to all the amendments perfect now it says change in the control change in the control of asset management company what is asset management company amc now what is amc sir amc is nothing but a company which takes care of your asset it is one of the important component in the mutual fund industry sir give me some example of amc you can just google it you can find some big names example hdfc amc a very good and big amc we have nippon amc nippon amc these amcs are listed amc we also have uti amc these three names are listed in the reckness stock exchange that means you can buy the shares of this company and can enjoy the profits whatever they are earning just become a shareholder of this company now guys these companies are actually company registered under section 2 clause 20 of companies act now guys it says change in control so if there is any change in the control of amc how sir involving scheme of arrangement under companies act 2013 you might have already discussed or you might already learn section 232240 where we discuss compromise arrangement of companies it can be merger compromise anything amalgamation of unlisted companies so all the process is been done already in the companies act my task is not to teach you what is there in 232 to 40 my task is just to discuss what is basic compromise and arrangement now it says involving the scheme arrangement under companies act now sir what is this line we have to understand the 
context first and then we will ult ultimately understand the amendment. Now, law says if there is any change in the control, if there is any change in the control of which company of asset management company of asset management company, how sir, because of some arrangement under companies act 2013. Then what is the amendment, sir? Let us understand the amendment. You can see this three big three paragraph amendment. But guys, this is very simple amendment. It says to streamline the process of providing approval, to streamline the process of providing the approval, change in the control of asset management company, that is AMC, involving scheme of arrangement, which needs a sanction of NCLT. I hope you know section 232 to 48 has been NCLT regulated. That means if a company wants to do compromise arrangement, they have to take permission from tribunal. Okay, that is NCLT. In terms of provision of company that 2013. So, this we already know that if you are planning to do any scheme of arrangement, it need to be approved by NCLT. Now, it says what? It says SEBI wide this regulation has provided that application for seeking approval for the proposed change in control of the AMC under regulation 22E of mutual fund regulation shall be filed with SEBI prior to filing the application with NCLT. Now, it says before you give it to NCLT, make sure you take approval from SEBI. Before you take approval from NCLT, you take permission from SEBI. Everybody, before filing application to NCLT, file an application to SEBI. We have not yet done, guys. It says, upon being satisfied, upon being satisfied with compliance of applicable regulatory requirements, in principle, approval will be granted by SEBI. So, before you approach to NCLT, you have to approach SEBI and they will be giving you in principle approval. The validity of such in principle will be 3 months. Now, this is important. This is 3 months. So, approval will be of 3 months. Okay. Now, this is 3 months. What is this 3 months is all about? We will discuss that. From the date of issuance within which the relevant application shall be made to NCLT. Within how many days? Within 15 days from the date of order of NCLT. Applicant shall file the application for the final approval along with the copy of NCLT order approving the scheme of SEBI for a final order. Now, if you see, we have to approach SEBI not once but twice. Before approaching NCLT, after getting approval from NCLT. So, we have to take two approvals from SEBI. First, in principle and last is final approval. I will just make a diagram for that so that you will understand this. It says, the provision of this circular shall be applicable to all the application for change in the control of AMC, which the scheme of arrangement are filed with NCLT on or after 1st of March 2022. It is applicable. Now, what is this provision is all about? You have, we have just discussed this 3 months and 15 days. Let me just write the provision. So, the first provision what I am writing is on mutual funds. Okay. The very first amendment, I am just writing the notes for you all guys also. So, that you can just have a handy revision. So, mutual funds amendment. Okay, mutual funds amendment. So, for the very first chapter I am discussing is mutual fund. Now, what was the discussion was all about? Now, it says that there is a timeline. I will just draw a line for you all guys. Yes. So, there is a timeline. What is this timeline is all about? Let us understand. So, guys, it says you have to take permission from NCLT. Ultimately, the process is NCLT approved. Yes. So, you have to take approval from NCLT as it is a matter of compromise and arrangement. Before you take a permission from NCLT, your first task, your first task is to take approval from Sir whom? Approval from SEBI. 
first. Now, guys, this approval is not the final approval, but this is in principle approval. Perfect. This is in principle approval. So, we have to take in principle approval. Now, this in principle approval will be valid for how many months? This in principle approval will be valid for valid for 3 months. Valid for 3 months. Long story short, sir, if you have applied for, if you have applied for, let me just make it a bit dark. So, if you have applied for in principle approval, within 3 months, you have to take permission from NCLT. So, the validity is 3 months. Perfect. Now, once you get the permission from tribunal, then again you have to approach SEBI. Again you have to approach SEBI. For what? Sir, for final approval. For what, sir? For final approval. Perfect. Now, guys, since you want to take this final approval, my question is, sir, within how many days we have to take this approval? Now, if somebody is watching this amendment, at the end, my sincere request is to see this video at least at 1.5x speed because ultimately it will save your time. Okay, so we have to submit this form you can say the final approval within 15 days so this is the amendment this is the amendment so amendment says what if there is if there is any change if there is any change if there is any change if there is any change, change in what? Change in control. Control of what? Control of AMC. Control of AMC. Now, date is not important when this provision is applicable. Date is not important for us. We will just check is this provision is important for examination perspective or not. So, change in control of AMC due to what? Due to arrangement. Due to arrangement. Generally, we take permission from NCLT, but now you have to take prior approval from SEBI. That in principle approval will be validated. You have to take the permission and that the permission will be having validity of 3 months. Once you take the permission from NCLT, you have 15 days to take the final order. This is what the whole paragraph is all about. First amendment, even you are not required to write this, I will be providing you the PDF. Everything is spoon feeding, you just study and give the exam. Yes, okay. So, this was the very first amendment what we have just now covered. Let us jump to the next amendment, okay. Let us cover the next amendment. So, first amendment is been covered. So, three months is covered. So, you know what is this three months? We have also covered this within 15 days. This is also been covered, okay. So, these things are already been covered. I hope you understood this. If you do, Make sure you spread love in the comment section. Yes, do let me know if you have any doubt. Also post in the comment section. I will happy to help you in the comment section as well. Yes, also share with the friends. Second point, it says SEBI Mutual Funds Amendment Regulation 2022. Yes, which came in force on January 25, 2022. Again, we are in the month of November, December. So, ultimately, it is already in force. Now, it says what? SEBI wide notification dated January 25, 2022. Not important for us. Has notified SEBI mutual fund amendment regulation 2022. Okay, very good. Which shall be come into force on the date of their publication in the official gazette. Very, very good. However, 
the amendments of sub regulation now you can see this however from however you can say sub regulation 4 regulation 3 this all thing you can see this all these regulations sub regulation i will just highlight all these things because not that important i will just i'm just marking it in blue these all regulation these all regulation will be in force from 1st april 2023 that means next year I am recording this video in the year 2022. So, this provision will be applicable in the month of April 2023. So, long story short, SEBI has introduced something. Some of the provisions are applicable straight away, right away on the date of publication of in, in the official gazette. Second, there are few provisions that will be applicable from 1st of April 2023. So, this is not that important for us right now but what are the amendments let us quickly read the amendments you can see one two three amendments okay three amendments again these amendments are very simple very easy now it says what the amendment it is in regulation 18 it is in regulation number 18 now if you see there is an amendment that has been substituted there is not a very big change they have just substituted a single word they have just included this 39. Now, sir, if you want to interpret, you want to understand everything, you should know what is 18. So, what is 18? So, we have this SEBI mutual fund regulation 1996. It is nothing but the Bayer Act. Now, if you see, the amendment is in 18. So, what is 18, sir? So, 18 is, so what is 18? So, 18 is rights and obligation of trustees okay rights and obligation of trustees let us go and also see what was 18 just give me one second mm, where is 18 where is 18 we are 21 okay just give me one second that's the reason i have said you to watch this video in 1.5 speed okay so this is the 18 sir rights and obligation of trustee let me change the color so what are the rights and what are the obligation of trustee let us understand that the amendment is in 15 okay where is 15 sir so here you go 15 okay it says what trustee shall obtain consent of unit holders for what whenever required to do so again again uh, we are not at all required to read a actually because the amendment is in c yes so this has been amended now what was the amendment the amendment is very simple it says where the majority of trustee decide to wind up the scheme in clause a what is clause a whenever to do so by the board in the interest of unit holder so whenever you want to close your mutual fund Whenever you want to wind up the scheme, wind up the scheme, you have to follow regulation number 39.2. 39.2. So, then what is the amendment? Now, guys, if you read this, uh, if you just read this, you can see the amendment is when the majority of trustee decide to wind up or prematurely redeem the units. So, previously this was the this was the uh, provision, but now they have included the clarification. If they want to wind up, then what is the process? From where we have to see that process? It is in 39. Now, what is 39? Just quickly go and see what is 39. Now, if you see 39, it is there in your syllabus as well. 39 is nothing but wind up. 39 is wind up. Quickly we will see what is 39. Now, they have just clarified that if you if you want to prematurely or you want to wind up the scheme, you have to go and see 39.2. Now, guys, if you see 39, if you see 39, I am just uh, teaching you that what is the basic amendment. They will not ask you what is 39 and everything. But yes, you should know how to read all these things because ultimately, we are professionals and we should know all these things. So, 39, it says what? If the board so direct in the interest of unit holder, 
where the schemes we wound up by regulation 2, the trustee shall give notice within one day. These all things were absent in the Bayer Act. They have just made it bit clear that if you are planning to do so, do this as well. So, they are just referring us. They are just referring us. So, previously this was the provision. Now, they have just included this word. This is important. Now, if you go see the next thing, it says, Sub-regulation 3 of regulation 39 shall constitute the following. Now, what is the basic amendment? The amendment is this. Previously, this one day disclosure, this one day was not there. If you see this, this was not there. They have just added it. So, if you are planning to close your scheme or you want to prematurely close the scheme, then beat a close ended scheme. In such a case, you have to give the notice or you can say you have to give notice to the board that is SEBI and also you just have to public it you have to make it public in the newspaper also it says if you have not received the approval from the unit holder because ultimately trustee cannot take the decision by themselves they have to take approval if they have not received the approval then approval whatever the decision was of the unit holder that again need to make it public in the newspaper and if unit holder reject that no they don't want to wind up the scheme in such a case whenever whenever it fails trustee fails that trustee want to wind up but unit holder want to make sure that funds or the scheme is being continued in such a case once it is done the trustee failed to obtain the required consent then the scheme shall be reopened again for the activities. So, they will in take the investment or whatever the functioning of the scheme is. So, long story short, what is the amendment? Not that important. First amendment was that they have just made it a bit clear that we have to follow 39. If you are, what are the duties of trustees? So, you have to go and check 39, the wind up scheme. Now, guys, when scheme can be wind up, that is also important. When scheme will be wind up? If you see, the scheme can be wind up in three important reasons. So, maybe, uh, it has been decided by the board, that means uh, by the SEBI, unit holder wants it or trustee are planning to close it. However, if trustees are planning to prematurely close the scheme, then they have to take the permission. If they fail to do so, then again they have to open the scheme. Now guys, this is not that important, but yes, this is bit important and uh, this is bit crucial. This is bit important, but this is bit crucial. It says what? It says, Financial statements and accounts of mutual fund scheme shall be prepared in accordance with Indian standards, yes, accounting standards and addendum thereto as notified by companies Indian accounting standards rule 2015 as amended from time to time. Provided that in case there is any conflict between requirement of index and all these regulation, the guideline issued there under the asset management companies shall follow the required specified under these regulation. Now, what is this amendment is all about? This is quite important. So, let me just give you my second important amendment. There are few amendments. So, second amendment in mutual funds. Now, it says that if you are a mutual fund, if you are a mutual funds you have to follow two important things first mutual fund regulation second will be accounting standards perfect you have to follow both the things however However, in case of conflict, however, in case of conflict, then what to do sir? If there is any conflict, loss is a very simple line, if there is any conflict, then, then follow mutual funds regulations a very simple amendment it says if there is a fight between 
accounting standards and mutual fund regulation. In that case, you will be following your own regulation. Guys, this is also there in Companies Act. If you have already read in the starting initial phase, example, banking companies. Banking companies will follow their banking regulation, RBI guidelines and also Companies Act. And when there is a conflict, always the regulated act wins. Yes, so in this case as well, this is the same concept. So similar concept. So again, not that difficult, but yes, even if you just read it once, you will get through this amendment. Now the last amendment is important amendment. You can just mark it star exam. This amendment is bit important. Why? Because the very first time they are introducing audit committee the very first time they're introducing audit committee now what is this audit committee and everything we'll discuss in that this is very important and you can expect this in your examination now it says what it says a very simple and it says taking into account it says taking into account the recommendation of mutual fund advisory committee that is mfac it says Taking into account, taking into account recommendation of mutual fund advisory committee and the feedback received from industry. So, we have received two important things. First, uh, they, we have received some recommendation from the committee and second is from the industry. It says what? It says, SEBI has prescribed that AMC, AMC, AMC. Till now, it was only the trustee companies where they have to keep the audit committee or listed companies or the companies who cross the threshold limit they used to keep audit committee now amc amc of mutual fund shall be required to constitute an audit committee that means if you are a amc if you are a amc that is hdfc mutual fund example icici mutual fund example uti nippon mutual fund so guys all these mutual funds that is AMC, AMC will have to constitute an audit committee for the very first time. Now it says what? The role, responsibility, membership and other feature of audit committee of AMC are detailed in this circular. So let us see that. Currently, currently the requirement of audit committee is at the level of trustee of mutual funds. Now with this we have to follow in AMC as well. Do let me know in the chat box what is the share price since there are few AMC companies listed in the Reckonet Stock Exchange, that is NSCBSC. You can go and search and let me know in the comment box what is the share price of UTI AMC, Nippon AMC and also HDFC AMC in the chat box. Perfect. Okay. Now, what is this all about? Let us understand this. So. What is the role? First point, the role, responsibility, membership, these things are important. Let us understand this. The very first thing is role. What about role? So it says, the audit committee of uh, AMC shall be responsible for oversee of financial reporting process. Oversee of financial reporting process. It is important and crucial. Why? Because ultimate in general companies, the basic task of audit committee is to see the financial reporting process. Next is audit process. Audit process means does the auditor is doing perfect? Does this auditor is qualified or not? These all things will be taken care of. Next is company system of internal control. Company system of internal control. Now what is this? What is this sir, internal control? Many of students have discuss this in their SM subject. Internal control means where company establishes a process, establishes some dynamics where they can cut down their risk and smoothen their operations. Let's take one simple example of uh, DMART. Now guys, whenever you go to DMART or you go to Zara, if the bill is not paid, there will be a buzzer. Now, why the company has that buzzer? Because if you plan to rob anything, it will just 
prevent that. So guys, whenever tomorrow, if you become the professionals in your company, there will be various things which is been done for the internal controls. Example, example, if you are planning to do internship or if you are a professional right now watching this video, then in your company, there will be an attendance system. Previously, we used to maintain muster roll, but it was very difficult to calculate who was absent and what was the in time, what was the out time. Now, we have a biometrics for that. Previously, even if the employees is in the company, but we do not know how much they are working. So, nowadays on computers and laptops, we can see the tracking. During COVID 2020, guys, everybody was wo working from home, guys. So, bosses were having power to see what are you actually doing on your screen. So, let us take an example. I am having this PDF on my file. That means I am working on it. My boss can watch this, that I am watching this PDF. This is nothing but the internal control. Every company will have their own set of internal control just to cut down their risk. So guys, this is varies from company to company and this audit committee will oversee this. Let us take one example of AMC. So you know these AMCs are a companies which have huge funds of public. They have so much of information because whenever a fund buys any stock, stock will go up. So, these managers, these fund managers can take undue advantage of this. They can buy shares before they buy from the funds account. There is a very famous case, you can go and google it out. There is excess mutual fund. Because ultimately during COVID time, this has been done and uh, this case was very famous. You can go and google after this amendment lecture about excess mutual fund. Now, Compliance to laws and regulation. This is the basic task of the audit committee. So, these are the roles of audit committee. Perfect, sir. Let us discuss the membership. The audit committee of AMC shall have minimum three director. Same of uh, audit committee, which I have already read in uh, CV LODR, also in Companies Act. It says at least two third of the members of the audit committee shall be independent director. And if two third of the total strength result into fraction, Example, I have calculated my two-third and answer comes 2.33. I will be rounding off to the next number 3. If my answer comes 7.5, then I will round it off to 8. If answer comes 5.1, I will round it off to 6. It says, then higher number after rounding off shall be considered. Simple. Member of audit committee will be appointed by board of director of AMC. Thank you. The mem all member of audit committee shall be the person with ability to read, understand financial statement. Again, thank you so much. These things are already common, guys. Copy pasted. And uh, it says at least one of the members shall be experienced and uh, the background of finance and accounts. Okay, simple. It also says uh, that chairman, chairperson of the committee uh, shall be independent director with adequate experience in the area of finance and financial service. Oh, that is simple. It is obvious. You should know financial, you understand financial service. Second important thing is all about the meeting. The chairperson of the audit committee shall call the meeting as and when required. Okay, thank you so much. These things are already been covered either in your Companies Act or in your LODR. The same thing. However, at least four meetings shall be called in a financial year and not more than 120 days shall be Pass within those two meetings. So, this is all done. Quorum. So, what is the quorum? Quorum is two or one third of member of audit committee, whichever is greater. At least two independent directors should be present. So, again, this is the thing important, but this is copy paste. Yes, we already know this. So, let me just quickly make a note of it. So, whenever you all guys are planning to study before the examination, you have a ready made notes. So, my third important amendment is. Audit committee. Okay. So, audit committee is for which companies? For AMC. Perfect. Now, 
first important point is role what is the role yes what is the role so role is very simple they will see the financial accounts they will see the audit process they will see the audit process they will be checking out the internal control and also their main task is law and compliance easy also guys you can share this video to your friends for cs final yes cs professional why because they also have this funding this is applicable for their examination but not mutual fund because they don't have in the professional so membership what about membership sir so it said at least you should have three whereby two third will be independent director perfect also a very crucial line that they shall be financially literate this is important also also they should have experience in finance and accounts perfect also 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 let me just write about chairman it will be chair person you know the amendment chair person chair person will always be independent director sir how many time we have to call the meeting so the meeting let me just write it meeting so we'll keep how many meetings so we will be keeping up 1 2 three four meetings we will be keeping how many meetings four meetings we will keep four meeting this is the minimum meeting or you have to keep in the financial year and the gap between these two meeting the gap between this two meeting should not be more than 120 days yes should not be more than 120 should not be more than 120 days simple okay let me write the last point that is of quorum sir what about the quorum sir so again quorum is very simple you should have at least two members yes or one third which ever is higher is he okay but you have to note that at least two independent director should present okay guys now this is one of the important amendment for your examination so this is the very first time so i have just sum up everything in this chart okay i have sum up everything in this chart so with this we have completed all the amendments which is relevant for december 2022 only mutual fund chapters we are yet to cover all the other chapters perfect so we have covered every amendment make sure you know the cut off time you should also know the sums there are numerical sums in mutual fund make sure you know that because they tend to ask five for five marks eight marks so you should know the sums also you should know the how industry works you should know the cut off time the cut off time who can become amc these all questions are been asked repeatedly and now you should know audit committee as well 
also if there is any change change in the AMC then what shall be the approach perfect you should know the benefits of mutual funds benefits of mutual funds also you should know the demerits of mutual funds so these concepts are repetitively asked in the examination let us jump to the next chapter amendment so i will be putting up the time stamp so that ultimately whenever you are revising it it will be helpful to you guys let us understand the next chapter's amendment that is cis amendment again uh, the amendments are not very difficult very easy let us quickly go through this it says sebi cis amendment regulation 2022 which came in force may 10 2022 sebi has notified cis amendment regulation 2022 which shall come into force on the date of their publication in the official gazette wide the notification the following amendments of cis 1999 has been made so what are the things which is important the very first thing it says auditors definition has been modified so what is the definition so definition is very easy uh, it says auditor means firm i see auditor means firm including llp constituted under llp act 2008 so auditor means firm firm means partnership firm also it includes llp which is being formed under llp act who is eligible and qualified to audit the accounts of the company under section 144 under section 141 of companies act 2013 what is this 141? 141 is nothing but the stat audit. So that means here qualified to audit means what sir? Qualified to audit means a chartered accountant is uh, having the power to do the audit. Okay. So again uh, that is not difficult. It is, it is very easy actually. So let us uh, jump to the next important definition. And what is that sir? It says definition of designated employees. Now we have defined designated employees. It says CEO, CIO, Chief Executive Officer, Chief Investment Officer, Chief Risk Officer, Chief Information Security Officer, Chief Operation Officer, Fund Manager, Compliance Officer, Sales Head, Investor Relation Officer, heads of other department and dealer of cis that is collective investment management company yes so cis is been managed by cimc it says who all are designated employees so if you are a ceo cio cro cis so the chief operation officers the all these people who are working in cimc will be considered as designated employee Next, it says, persons directly reporting, person or the employee directly reporting to the chief executive officer, excluding their PAs and secretaries. Yes, personal assistant and secretaries. Which secretary? Personal secretary is not included in this. Fund manager and research team. Again, they are designated employees. Other employee as identified by CIMC or trustee. Again, this is not very heavy. So, this is easy. Now it says regulation 9 which specified the condition for eligibility for registering as CIMC. Clause C has been substituted with the following and what is that? Clause C is being changed. It says the applicant or its promoter should have sound track record and general reputation of fairness and integrity in all their business transactions. So whosoever want to open CIS, they should be qualifying all these things. Now, we have a very important, you can say, heavy amendment here. So, the fourth amendment I will be covering at the end. Let us quickly go to the fifth one. It says what? In regulation number 14, which specifies the obligation of CIMC, following clause has been inserted. And what is that? It says, the CIMC and its designated employee shall invest such amount in such scheme of CIS or CIMC as specified by the SEBI from time to time. So, the amount of investment 
the amount of investment will be decided by SEBI. So, again that is not that important. The next important is closure subscription list. It says following regulation 24-6 has been inserted and what is this? Closure of subscription list. Now, what is this subscription list? I have opened my CIS and my public will be investing in this. So, after that what is the criteria? It says every collective investment scheme shall immediately after the closure of the subscription list comply the following. First, minimum subscription of 20 crore. First, second minimum 20 investors. So, I need 20 crore plus 20 investor and one investor should not hold more than 25 percent of the whole asset. Guys, if I do not follow this provision, then I have to refund all this money. So, it says where CIS fails to comply with sub regulation, CIMC shall be liable to refund the money to the applicant. So, guys, again, this is very easy. I need 20 crore, I need 20 investors and the control of or you can say one investor should not hold more than 25 percent in the scheme. Next is regulation number 30 deal with offer period. The offer period is that period where in uh, offer period is that period where investor who wants to invest they can put up their money. It says what? Offer period. No collective investment scheme shall be open for subscription more than 15 days. So, the offer period the offer period shall be open for 15 days provided however that CIS scheme may be kept open for subscription for maximum another 15 days. We will get one more extension subject of issuance of public notice by CIMC before the expiry of initial 15 days. So, my offer period will be generally of 15 days. However, if I want to extend it further 15 days, let me just yes, further 15 days, then I have to give a public notice. So, guys, this was very simple. So, let us quickly go through the last regulation. It says criteria for fit and proper person after regulation 9A following 9B has been inserted. Very important. Now, there is some basic mistake. This is 9B, this is first one and this is the second one. This is second actually, it will not come C, this is second. Let us understand this. It says no, everybody, no collective investment management company, that is no CIMC or promoter of CIMC. Let me just draw a diagram. This is my CIMC. So, it says no CIMC or promoter of CIMC. There associates or group companies, their associates or group companies through schemes, through schemes of collective investment management company, through schemes of the CIMC or otherwise individually or collectively directly or indirectly you are not allowed. You are not allowed to do what? Everybody come on. No CIMC, no CIMC promoter, their associates or group company. Please repeat after me. No CIMC, no CIMC or promoter or you can see their associates, group company associates group company everybody no company yes so it says cis sorry it says cimc their promoter their associates their group company 
are not allowed are not allowed to do what let us understand that not allowed to do what 10 percent not allowed to do what 10 percent or more of shareholding or voting rights in the collective investment management company or trustee company or any other CIMC. So, you are not allowed to hold 10 percent of control, 10 percent of control in your CIMC or any other CIMC or trustee company. Perfect, because CIMC is been controlled by trustee company, right? Been controlled by trustee company. So, it says, you will not do, who will not do CIMC, their promoter, CIMC associate company or group company will not hold what 10 percent or more, 10 percent of more of what, of shareholding or voting rights of which company, of CIMC, of CIMC, own CIMC or trustee company or trustee company or any other CIMC. So, you are not even allowed to hold shareholding in other CIMC. So guys, it also says one more line, it says representation on the board of CIMC or trustee company or any other collective investment company. So, even you are not allowed to hold the basic position in the board of your own CIMC or your trustee company or any other CIMC. So guys, what is the basic logic? Let us understand this. Example, Radha Kishan Damania who owns DMART holds approximately more than 70 percent of the company holds more than 70 percent of the company rest of the money is being invested by the public. The public has also invested in the company. Promoter has also invested in the company. But ultimate control of the company is of promoter. Are you getting my point? So, retailers are always aggrieved. To understand all these things, we have in a CS profession, we have subject for this as well. Long story short, example Reliance Industries, 50, approximately 50 percent is held by the Ambani family. The rest 50 percent is been held by other, held by others, maybe DII, FII, you and me retailers, HNIs, whatever the story may be. But ultimately, Mukesh Ambani controls the company. Why? Because his holding is approximately 50 percent. Long story short, if you are into CIS business, your company, you cannot have more than 10 percent in your own CIMC, in other CIMC or your trustee company. Because ultimately, it will control the whole process and it will lead to fraud. That is the reason you are not allowed to hold 10 percent or even not, you are not allowed to hold the board positions. So, whenever I say board, company will be not coming into that, only the shareholder or the promoter will be coming into the picture. The next important thing. So, any shareholder holding 10 percent. Sir, just now you have mentioned you are not allowed to hold 10 percent. Guys, guys, CIMC or promoter, CIMC or promoter, they are not allowed. But any other person can, can hold. Are you getting my point? CIMC or promoter cannot hold, but it says any other shareholder, any other shareholder. So, any other will, will work. It says any other shareholder holding how much? 10 percent or more or a voting right in CIMC or trustee company of CIMC shall not, shall not have a direct lien directly do what? So, it says if this is my CIMC. And my friend Muku hold 12 percent. He is not promoter of this CIMC. So, he can hold more than 10. Who is not allowed to hold 10? Who is not allowed? It says CIMC not allowed, promoter of CIMC not allowed, their associate company not allowed, their group company not allowed, Swaha, they are not allowed. Then who are allowed, sir, any other shareholder can hold. But even they have some restriction, what are those restrictions? It says, what? 10 percent, you cannot hold 10 percent or more of shareholding or voting rights in CIMC 
of trusty company or any other any other scams so muku my boy you cannot hold you cannot hold share in our trusty company you hold you can also hold share in other 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 cimc not allowed so two category people promoter cimc promoter cimc let me just draw one diagram that will be really helpful okay so this is important see these all things are very complex but ultimately you need to understand so it says cimc promoter yes it says what cimc or promoter it is very simple you have to go slow if you go very fast if you are watching this in uh, 1.75 speed it will be very tough to understand so it's my sincere request just make it normal because this concepts are important says what i'm the promoter it says who are not allowed so it says cimc promoter if cimc have some associate company or their group company now they are not allowed they are not allowed to do what to hold 10% or more what sir share holding share holding or voting rights so you are not allowed to do sir where i should not hold this 10% so it says you should not hold in your cis or you can say cimc not allowed to hold in your trusty company or any other cimc so you are not allowed to hold in your cimc in other cimc even associate company will not hold so this is what an other shareholder have other things so other shareholder the criteria for other shareholder is what is the task for other shareholder so other shareholder says if you are holding more than 10% then you are not allowed to do what so you are not allowed to hold 10% of shareholding or voting rights in trusty company or any other cmc so if my friend mukesh if my friend mukesh holds 12% in our cmc so he is not allowed to invest more than 10% in other cmc or in our trusty company it says representation on the board of collective investment management company or trusty company or any other cmc so you are not even allowed to hold a board position in our cmc in our trusty company and other cmc company not allowed now it says one more thing provided that in the event of merger acquisition scheme of arrangement or any other arrangement involving the promoter of cimc shareholder of cimc or trusty company their associate or group company which result into incidental acquisition incidental acquisition incidental acquisition of shares voting rights or representation on the board of collective investment management company or trusty company this regulation shall be complied within one year says what if you are not controlling directly but you have acquired some other company and guys because of that this threshold limit crosses then guys you have one year to to make sure you align or you should follow this rules i will give you one year i have not acquired 10% i have acquired some other company because of that i am receiving this power of 10% or more then i will be getting one year for clearing all these things guys this was one of the important provision so just quickly revise it so it says rcimc our cimc of our promote promoter of cimc our uh, associate companies group companies are not allowed to hold what 10% or more shareholding or voting rights in our cimc or interest company or any other cimc 
second you are not allowed to hold uh, management position board position in uh, cimc or a trustee company of our trustee company or any other cimc if any other shareholder hold 10 percent or more then uh, even they have some restriction first restriction that they cannot hold 10 percent of voting right where in my trustee company or any other cimc perfect even cannot hold the board position so guys uh, this is the end of all the amendments of CIS. So, quickly revise, we'll quickly revise it. First, it says uh, auditor's definition, then we have designated uh, employees, which includes chief executive officer and all those uh, th people. So, eligibility criteria, you should have sound track record. This is uh, one of the biggest amendment and ultimately, the amount of investment will be notified by SEBI and last but not the least. Uh, the closure, you can say, I think I am expecting this for 2 marks, maybe 2 marks or 3 marks in question number 6. You can uh, read this. This is also quite important. I can, I'm expecting this. So, uh, what is the closure, subscription of closure, uh, closure of subscription list? So, there are some criteria. First, I need uh, subscription amount of 20 crore, minimum uh, 20 investment, 20, 20 investors. And last, uh, single investor should not hold 25% of the asset perfect and if you don't follow all these things you will refund the money of a period minimum 15 days can extend for more 15 days but you have to give public notice so guys with this we have completed all the amendments of uh, this chapter that is collective investment schemes i will see you in the next part which will be uh, the next chapter let us start with the icdr's amendment okay the very first amendment now it says sebi issue of capital and disclosure requirement amendment regulation 2022 that is january 14 2022 now it says what it says sebi wide its notification dated on 14 january 2022 has amended the provisions of sebi issue of capital and disclosure requirement regulation 2018 which has come into force on the date of their publication the official gazette that means all the provisions are applicable as soon as it is being notified now it says what provided the amendments of sub regulation 3a and these all things will be applicable from 1st of april 2022 that means everything is now applicable few of the amendments are applicable on 14th of jan the next set of amendment is applicable on april 1 all the amendments are applicable to our examination very quickly let us understand the very first amendment it says what it says there is a change in the definition there is a change in the definition what is the change it says wherever wherever it appears shall be substituted with the willful defaulters or fraudulent borrower it says wherever in the regulation we can see willful defaulters so, who are willful defaulters? Willful defaulters are those persons who has basically took loan from the banks and now not ready to pay the money. Sir, these are the person which are being qualified or you can say RBI or the consortium of banks has created a list of such willful defaulters. Now, they have the power to pay the money or example, whatever the object of the loan, they have just diverted that money. So, in this case, these all people are known as willful defaulter. Now, with the willful defaulter, we have added one more word that is fraudulent borrower. Now, wherever you read willful defaulter in the regulation, you will be adding one more word that is willful defaulter or a fraudulent borrower. Simple, easy. So, guys, this is not a big amendment, but yes, this is just an addition of a new word fraudulent borrower. So guys, if you have diverted, if you have used for any other object, you have a paying capacity still, you are not paying the money, then consortium or the group of bank or with, with the help of RBI can create a list of willful defaulters. Now willful defaulters plus we will be reading it as willful defaulters or a fraudulent borrower. Simple. Let us jump to the next important, very, very important regulation. Let us read these regulations first and then we will understand it. Perfect. So. I will be writing the notes at the end, need not to worry about it. Now, it says what? Second point, very crucial and very, very important. It says what? 
जनरल कंडीशन जनरल कंडीशन फॉर ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द इश्यू फॉर आईपीओ एफपीओ राइट इश्यू सो इट इज एप्लीकेबल टू आईपीओ एफपीओ राइट इश्यू दे हैव इंसर्टेड बेसिक थिंग्स लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट सेज वॉट एन इश्यूअर मेकिंग एन आईपीओ यस एफपीओ राइट इश्यू shall ensure that the amount of general corporate purpose yes that is general corporate purpose what is gcp gcp is nothing whenever you plan to raise money from the markets from the public so we can keep certain percentage as general corporate purpose where we will be not mentioning where we will be using this money perfect sir then i will keep 100% no that is not allowed you know the percentage but let us understand the amendment it says it says wherever a company or a issuer plans to do ipo fpo rights issue shall ensure that amount for general corporate purpose and such objective where the issuer company has not identified acquisition what is this sir has not identified acquisition i will tell you in a while or investment target or investment target yes as mentioned in the object of the issue in the draft offer document and the offer document shall not exceed 35% of the total amount being raised by the issuer let me just tell you one important word here that is identified acquisition is the important word plus investment target these two words are important i will tell you what all these words let me read it however the amount raised for such object where the issuer company has not identified acquisition identified acquisition or investment target as mentioned in the object of the issue in the draft offer document and the offer document shall not exceed 25% of the amount being raised by the issuer Now, sir, I can see two two percentage. First is thirty five percent, is second is twenty five percent. Is sir, what is it all about? Need not to worry, guys. I will tell you in a very simpler format. Let us read first. Let us understand first. Let us read it and let us try to do the basic analysis of any amendment. It says further, provided that such limit shall not apply if the proposed acquisition or strategic investment objective has been identified. and suitable specific disclosures about such acquisition or investments are made in the draft offer document and the offer document at the time for filing the offer documents now this is a very important amendment let me just put a star whenever i put a star make sure you are well versed with that amendment now guys to understand this amendment let us go to our notes so we'll write the notes you can download this from the comment section or i will be putting up this notes in the description box the same handwritten notes also i will be giving you the bare file both the things will be there in the uh, box so let us quickly jump and discuss so already i have covered uh, mutual funds amendment also i have covered cis amendment let me just put up a heading and write icdr amendment icdr amendments easy let us understand the amendment by amendment let me just write the first amendment as well the first amendment was willful defaulters is now substituted substituted with willful defaulter plus fraudulent borrower this was a very simple thing let us jump to the second amendment i will be writing the notes before the examination if you know the basic things even or you you can just memorize these things even it will work perfect so what was the old provision for understand that and then we'll understand the amendment the guys the old provision is very simple so it was let me just write here what was the old provision so the old provision is maximum what you can keep or you can say the maximum amount maximum amount for general 
कॉर्पोरेट पर्पस शाल नॉट एक्सीड शाल नॉट एक्सीड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट दिस वॉज द ओल्ड प्रोविजन नो मेजोरिटी ऑफ द पीपल इंटरप्रेट दैट दिस इज बीन रिमूव्ड नो दिस इज नॉट बीन रिमूव्ड द अमेंडमेंट इज वेरी सिंपल नो वॉट इज द न्यू प्रोविजन वॉट इज द न्यू प्रोविजन लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट इज द न्यू प्रोविजन स्टिल वी हैव द लिमिट स्टिल वी हैव द लिमिट दैट इज दिस लिमिट इज स्टिल देयर वी स्टिल हैव दिस लिमिट दैट इज मैक्सिमम अमाउंट for gcp shall not exceed shall not exceed 25% we still have this we still have this everybody we still have this provision majority of our are interpreting it as this has been removed we still have this but what is been added what is been added added is this has been added that is maximum amount maximum amount for unidentified yes we just uh, so it has been added that unidentified investments unidentified investment shall not exceed 25% sir we read 35% something like that i will tell you what is the provision i will tell you sir now what is this unidentified investment will discuss that need not to worry about it now what is the amendment we still have these concept we still have this concept that gcp is 25% and unidentified investment is 25% we still have this provision there is no amendment in this we have just added this that if there is any unidentified investment then the max limit will be 25% now guys many of the people what they used to do let me just give you a numerical example so that you just get this point let's take an example we are planning for an uh, public issue whereby my plan is to raise 100 crore very small ipo example whereby i plan to buy land of 25 crore maybe 30 crore i will be clearing my loans perfect so if i just add 30 plus 25 if we just add it it will come around 55% now guys i have mentioned the purpose what is the purpose i have mentioned like what is my purpose where i will use this money right the next what i have planned let us write the balancing figure that is 100 minus 55 whatever it is example 45 crore balance as general corporate purpose sir will it work answer is no i have to mention where i will be using that money general corporate purpose means i will be not specifying where i will be using this money maybe i will be painting the walls whatever maybe i will be buying you furniture i have not mentioned it law has said no 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 you have a limit of 25% 25% of the issue that means i can keep maximum of 25 crore if we just add it 25 plus 25 plus 30 80 now guys people started planning more in a innovative way let us write instead of gcp i plan to do what i plan to write 30 crore as unidentified investment will it work answer is no again in the whole issue in the whole issue if you plan to do a unidentified investment let's take an example the balance 45 crore 
whatever the balance of 45 crore was you plan to do invest not in general corporate purpose but you have mentioned that sir i will be investing in some unidentified investment so i used to write as investment guys even if i write investment i have not mentioned where i have just mentioned investments guys if i write investments just investments still i will not mention where i will be investing my money i will buying reliance i will buying any other company shares i have mentioning 45 crore investment again losses no 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 not allowed from the whole issue size that is 100 crore you can keep 25% as unidentified investment okay sir that means from the whole issue from the whole issue size 25% will be gcp and max 25% will be the investment okay so sir uh, that means i cannot keep this 45 crore balance as my gcb answer is yes now sir what is that 35% was all about it says gcp plus unidentified investment whatever the investment is gcp is 25% also unidentified investment is 25% so that means i will do a one simple plan i will do a plan that i will be buying land of 25 crore gcp is 25 crore investment i will not mention where the investment is 25 crore and rest 25 crore i will pay off the loan no even it will not work why sir you just you just said that 25% 25% is the limit then why you are telling now no guys the amendment is if in your object if you are adding these two things if in the object for adding these two things the limit will be 35% limit will be 35% got it sir simple easy everybody so this was a very easy amendment very easy amendment so out of 100 crore if the issue that is 100 crore 25% is the limit for GCB, 25% is the limit for unidentified investment. However, if in your object or if in your prospectus, if you are planning to mention GCB plus unidentified investments, the both the limit, you have 35% limit. Sir, uh, give me some example, more examples. Yes, I will give you more example. So, let me just uh, erase this. So, guys, my basic planning is to do what? So, I cannot do this 45 crore balance as my GCP. So, what I did, I wrote 25 crore, 25 crore as general corporate purpose. Easy. So, uh, if, I, if I add this, that is 25 plus 30 plus 25 it comes to around 80 sir can i keep 20 crore as investment no you cannot why if you just add it it comes around 20 percent it comes around 25 percent sir you only said 25 percent allowed guys in your object these two things are there right so maximum is 35 percent limit whenever in your Whenever you are planning to do a public issue, if GCP plus unidentified investments are there, then the max limit is 35% and not 20 by 25. That means what? That means I can keep this investment, I can keep this investment as 10 crore, not 20 crore. Easy? Let us understand, let us write this. So, it says maximum amount maximum amount for general corporate purpose and unidentified unidentified investments investments shall not exceed 35% shall not exceed 35%. Now, guys, whenever I say unidentified investment, so what are unidentified investment? So, government has also been given the clear picture about it. It says 
अनआइडेंटिफाइड इन्वेस्टमेंट मीन्स वॉट नॉट आइडेंटिफाइड आइडेंटिफाइड एक्विजिशन एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट टारगेट let us just read it and let us quickly understand so if you just go and read those lines we will automatically get this it says what come on it says general corporate purpose and not identify investments and what is this not identify investments and investment targets i have already mentioned it the limit is 35% if both the things are there 35% limit if there is only an unidentified investment, 25%. GCP, 25%. Both the things, 35%. Perfect. Now, guys, these things are important. And I think I have given you the simplified. In, before the examination, even if you read this, whatever I have given you, it will really suffice for your examination. So, this is the provision. Old provision, 25%. New provision, GCP, 25%. Maximum. Maximum unidentified investment 25 percent, but now the addition is if we have both the things together, the limit is 35 percent. What is unidentified investment? It is unidentified acquisition plus investment targets. Simple with this, we have completed our second amendment of ICDR. Again, these amendments are not really uh, difficult, but yes, the interpretation work is very important. Let us start with the third amendment. So, guys, instead of uh, starting with three, I will be covering the small amendment. The, this fifth amendment, a very simple amendment. It says price and price band. Let us read it. Let us understand it. It says the cap on the price band. It says cap on the price band and the coupon rate in case of convertible debt instruments shall not less than equal to 120% of the flow price provided that the cap of the price band shall be at least 105% of the floor price. Now, what is this all about? Let us understand with the example and what was the old provision and what is the new provision. Now, guys, what is this all about? This is my amendment number three, actually. I am not going as per sequence. So, previously, whenever you want to decide a price band in the public issue, Price band can be decided in a two format or you can say price can be determined in two formats or in two ways. Either it can be a fixed issue or it can be a book build. In the fixed price method, the price has been fixed by the company. Book build method, we have to give a band. Now, the amendment is related to that. Now, what was the old provision? The old provision was that in the price band, the Upper band can be can be maximum one twenty percent. Simple, easy. Yes, acha. One twenty percent of what, sir? One twenty percent of the lower band. Now we have a amendment. Now, what is the amendment? Amendment is upper band, upper band shall be minimum, minimum 105% of the lower band so give me some example once i will give you the example automatically you will get it let's take one some example for example let's take an example my lower band is rupees 100 perfect then what will be the upper band previously it was maximum 120 now it says 
minimum to minimum you have to keep 105 so my lower band is 100 then upper band minimum level is 105 and maximum is 120 rupees superb so this was the very simple amendment this was the amendment again this is a very simple amendment a very small amendment also important amendment okay so we have right now we have covered first amendment second amendment and the fifth amendment so i will just write here a refer notes for better understanding notes is important automatically we will get to know about it and uh, we have one more amendment and that is what let us quickly discuss the small amendment so i'm not taking the heavy right now i'm taking the seventh easiest amendment it says monitoring of utilization of ipo proceeds amendment so we have an amendment here now let us understand the old provision previously the monitoring agencies were scheduled commercial bank now what is the amendment now, amendment is now the task will be done by credit rating agencies plus previously the scheduled commercial bank used to make a report where the funds were utilized 95 percent but now the monitoring agency will report 100 percent the gcp and everything has been all is gone now you have to report it 100 percent now it says what if the issue size exceed 100 crore the issuer shall make arrangement for the use of proceed of the issue we monitor only by a credit rating agency previously it was scheduled commercial bank now it is credit rating agency registered with sebi instead of scheduled commercial bank and public financial institution it says monitoring of funding raised by the issuer company must be done the entire proceeds instead of earnest while you can say the requirement was 95 so previously it was 95 now it is whatever amount you have raised it needs to be monitored by credit rating agency so they will be preparing a report where they will be issuing things that where we have utilized that money so this is a very small video let's discuss the next amendment that is the sixth amendment the sixth one now, what is this amendment is all about? Let us understand that. Let us read it quickly and then understand. It says, allocation in the net offer. Allocation in the net offer. Now, what is this? It says, in an issue made through book building process, in an issue made through book building process, the allocation in the non-institutional investor, that is NII, category shall be as follows but guys if you remember the net offer or you can say the allocation in net offer if you remember the rules if you remember if you have followed all the basic criteria 6 1 all the basic eligibility criteria then the limit is minimum 35 percent for rii minimum 15 percent for nii and maximum 5050 percent for qib now in any case if you are not applying the concept or you can say you are not fulfilling the eligibility criteria then also we can bring an ipo but in that case the allocation changes accordingly now it says minimum 75 you will be allowing to qib perfect maximum 10 percent to rii and maximum 15 percent to nii this is what the criteria is all about now it says the nii portion there is sub categorization we have clarified more on that it says now one third of the portion to nii shall be reserved for applicant with application size more than 2 lakh but up to 10 lakh so generally there was no categorization for nii now there's a new categorization for that 
second it says two third two third of the portion available to nii shall be reserved for applicant with application size more than 10 lakh so long so the short we have a reservation criteria or we can see that in nii now we have made further two categories now let me just give you what is the basic amendment so let me write it here at the end of this uh, notes section so that whenever you are planning to read you can just have a quick guide for this so the fifth one what i'm discussing is about the nii portion so what is the amendment it says the NII portion, if you are doing it with 6-1 or you are doing it with 6-2, be it a normal book building or alternate book building, the criteria was to allot minimum 15% to NII and in 6-2 it is maximum 15 percent to NII. Now what is the basic classification? So what they have basically categorized it. So now NII will have two categories. First category is application application. So the classification is based on the amount of application. So it says if you have applied for 2 lakh to 10 lakh then I will be giving you a allotment that is one third and if I see here if you have applied more than 10 lakh then I will be giving you two thirds. Perfect. So, this was the further classification what they have made in NII. There was no such classification previously. Now, they have just added this. So, again, this is not that uh, difficult, but yes, it was important. And let us quickly go and uh, refer that again. Okay. So, this was the amendment what they have discussed. And it says uh, provided that unsubscribed portion in either the subcategories specified in clause A or clause B may be allocated to applicant in other subcategories. That means what? That means spillover is allowed. Spillover is allowed. That means if in any category the number of portion is not fulfilled or you can say there is less subscription then we can just change the allotment criteria as well. So, let us take an example. We were about to fill 15 percent in NII and there is no demand in NII. So, we can just change the category and give it accordingly. So, even uh, that is a basic simple thing. So, this is also there. This is the basic thing. So, long story short, the whole amendment is one third and two third. What is one third and two third? The basic criteria or you can say the basic categorization of NII. So, this is the sixth one. Let us hop up to the uh, next amendment this amendment 3 and amendment 4 are are linked that i will be covering seventh one is done that is monitoring agency now it will be cra let us jump to the next amendment now what is the next amendment quickly let us see that it says regulation 8a is inserted prescribing the additional condition for offer for sale for issue of regulation 62 now, what is 6-2? 6-2 is a procedure which has been laid down under ICDR when you don't fulfill the criteria which has been given for IPO. So, basically when you come forward for alternate issue, whenever you don't follow the rule, that is 15 crore, all the rules is been not followed, but still you want to come up with an IPO. In such a case, we comes up with IPO under regulation 6-2. Now, it says we have inserted 8A. What is 8A? Let us understand that. It says what? Share offered for sale to the public by shareholding 
होल्डिंग इंडिविजुअली और विथ पर्सन एक्टिंग इन कंसर्ट मोर देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट दैट मीन इज अग शॉर्ट इन्वेस्टर यस इज अग शॉर्ट इन्वेस्टर एग्जाम्पल अ पर्सन होल्ड हाउ मच मोर देन मोर देन हाउ मच मोर देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट इन द कंपनी ऑफ प्री इशू प्री इशू शेयर होल्डिंग ऑफ द इशूअर प्री इशू शेयर होल्डिंग ऑफ द इशूअर बेस्ड ऑन फुल्ली डायलूटेड बेसिस शेल नॉट एक्सीड मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ देर प्री इशू होल्डिंग ऑन फुल्ली डायलूटेड बेसिस नाउ वॉट इज दिस रूल इज ऑल अबाउट इट्स एस इफ अ पर्सन होल्ड मोर देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट मोर देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ प्री इशू शेयर होल्डिंग ऑफ द इशूअर then in that case you cannot sell off 50% of your holding let's take an example if i been a basic main promoter of the company holds 49% i hold 49% and if i'm coming up with an ipo with an alternate method i cannot dispose of my 49% 50% so whatever i'm holding that's 50% i cannot dispose of first thing second thing shares offered for sale to the public by shareholders holding individually or person acting in concert less than 20% of pre issue holding of the issuer based on fully ledger basis shall not exceed more than 10% of pre issue share holding of the issuer of the issuer so if a person holds less than less than 20% even that person is not allowed not allowed to do what not allowed to dispose of their shares but maximum is 10% 10% of what 10% of can you read this pre issue share holding of the issuer that means total number of shares of the company and if you read this shall not exceed or you can say pre issue share holding of the issuer so long story short long story short if you just read it it says the share holding and if you read this it says of the whole company there is a difference between so if you are holding more than 20% then there is a different criteria if you are holding less than 20% then there is a different criteria it says if you are holding 20% more than 20% then you can sell it off your 50% of your holding and if you are holding less than 20% then you can sell it off maximum 10% of the whole shareholding of the company now it says what another point it says what for shareholder holding individually or with person acting in concert more than 20% of pre issue shareholding of the issuer based on fully dedicated basis specific provision locked in provision lock in as specified under regulation 17 shall be applicable and relaxation from lock in period as clause c regulation 17 shall not be applicable Now what is this rule is all about? It says what? There are some person, example, the venture capital. They get some exemption. Now the lock-in is basically if I am the pre-IPO shareholder, then I have a lock-in of six months from the date of IPO. Now these people enjoy lock-in not from the date of IPO but the date of their acquisition. This was the insertion. It says what? The equity share held by VC, AIF, or Category One, Category Two foreign venture capital investor shall be logged in at least for six months from the date of purchase and not a date of what and not date of IPO. So, if you are coming up with this regulation six two, then this exemption will be not available to you. So, these two regulation was hand on hand together. So, let us quickly again jump to the next important one again i will be giving you short notes that will be at the end of this uh, book i will be providing that rough handwritten notes in the chat box so that you can use it the next important point is uh, what it is on refund of application money so it says what in the event of non receipt of minimum subscription so if you have not received the minimum subscription that is 90% 90% in all the application money which will be refunded within 4 days previously it was 15 days now it is changed to 4 days now it says for next again this is very simple next is release of subscription money 
now it says what in case issuer fails to obtain listing or trading permission let's take an example we took we have already took the permission of the stock exchange it is called as in principle approval on the basis of in principle approval we have started the procedure but in any case the stock exchange has cancelled that permission in that case whatever money i have received again i have to refund it within four days previously it was seven eight days now everything has been changed now everything is four days so it says what through a verifiable means entire money within four days earlier it was seven the result of intimation of the stock exchange is rejecting the application for listing of specific security and if any such money is not repaid within four days earlier it was eight after the issuer become liable to repay the issuer and every director of the company who is officer in default shall be on the expiry of fourth day be jointly and severally liable to pay 15% per annum so now the whole thing is that they have streamlined it now we are not at all required to memorize different different days we are just required to remember what basic days of four days now it says what period of subscription now we have an amendment it says amendment is on rights issue Period of subscription. Now amendment is on right issue. It says what? Now you can open minimum for seven days and maximum for thirty days. Previously it was fifteen days minimum. So the number of days has been changed. Again, this is very simple. Now it says what? It says eligibility requirement for further public offer. Further public offer. It says what? an issuer shall be eligible to make further public offer if it has not changed its name in last one year immediately uh, preceding the date of filing the relevant offer document again this information is not an amendment it's just an information provided if an issuer has changed the name in last one year period the immediate preceding the date of filing the relevant offer document such issuer shall make further offer if at least 50% of the revenue for the preceding one year has been earned earned in that activity so again this was there in our notes i have already covered in the regular lectures this is not an amendment second let us read it it says an issuer not satisfying the conditions stipulated in proviso of sub regulation 1 shall make a further public offer only if the issue is made through the book building and the issuer undertakes to allot 75% of the net offer to the qualified Institutional buyer and refer all the subscription money. If he fails to make again, there is no change. The guys, uh, there was a mistake in the uh, module that has been rectified by this amendment. Not an amendment, but just an update. The next important is issuer ineligible. Who all people will be ineligible to make a preferential issue? Let us understand that. First point. It says amendment for regulation one fifty nine one. It says what? Preferential issue specified security shall not be made to any person who has sold or transferred an equity shares during ninety trading days. Now, previously the rule was, if you are planning, let's take an example. If I want to allot shares to Mr. X, Mr. There should be no transaction of that share in last six months. Now, the number or the days has been reduced to ninety days. Next is one fifty nine four. It says what? the issuer shall not be eligible to make preferential issue if any if it has any outstanding dues to the board stock exchange or depository so long story short if any dues is pending toward all this regulatory body then again you are not allowed to do preferential issue it says what however this shall not be applicable in the case where the outstanding dues are subject matter of pending appeal or proceeding so if the case is ongoing in any code of law then even if you don't pay this it is fine next is again it is on uh, condition for preferential issue it says what the issuer has made an application seeking in principle approval to the stock exchange where its equity are listed on the same day when the notice has been sent to respect to General meeting seeking the shareholder approval by the way of special resolution. It says what the day you will send notice to shareholder on that day itself. On that day itself, make sure you are sending an application for in principle so that uh, we will be giving a twenty one days notice. Shareholder will come and will take special resolution. Till that time, will receive the in principle approval from the stock exchange. So. the long story short the main part is the day you are sending the notice for the meeting on the same day 
you will be filing for in principle approval. Now the next point is what? It says tenure for convertible security. Sir, what is the concept? Concept is tenure. Let us understand with a very simple thing. What shall be the tenure? So it says upon the exercise. So if a person exercise the option by the allotty to convert the convertible security, then it says company have to allot within 15 days. So if they exercise, if they have exercised, then within 15 days allotment should be done. Easy? Okay. These are very small, small amendments. Again, some of the amendments are not there in your syllabus as well. It says what? Amendment of Regulation 163.2 says what? The issuer shall place a copy of certificate of practicing company secretary before the general meeting to the shareholder considering that the proposed preferential issue certified that issue has been accordance with the rules and regulation prescribed. That means on the general meeting, we have to prepare a certificate. Before that, we have to prepare a certificate by PCS. Whenever PCS come, you should be happy. Reason being, we will be getting more work. So, PCS will be approving it or making a report which will be stated that we have followed all the rules and regulation related to preferential issue and that will be submitted to shareholders. Again, simple one. Again, it says amendment in 163.3. It says what? Specified securities may be issued on preferential basis for consideration other than cash. Sir, we are issuing shares on preferential basis but other than cash, how is it allowed? Law says it is allowed in only in the case of swap. So, it says what? Provided the consideration other than cash shall be comprised only the swap of share. So, long story short, sir. So, if we are planning to give shares on preferential basis. If we are planning to give shares on preferential basis, guys need to understand, then one need to do what? One need to only do other than cash only in case of swap. Again, the valuation and everything will be done by the registered valuer. Lock-in, so again, this lock-in is an old amendment where it says lock-in requirement for security allotted to the promoter, promoter group up to 20%. It is reduced to 18 months. And the allotment exceeding 20% is 6 months. Any shareholder holding, any other person holding shares before the IPO will have 6 month lock-in. Previously, it was 1 year. Now, they have reduced it. Now, it says pledge of lock-in security. Now, this is a very important and very beautiful concept. It says what? Regulation 167A says what? Specified security kept SR equity held by the promoter and the logged in under the provision of this regulation may be pledged as a collateral for a loan granted by scheduled commercial bank or public financial institution or a systematic important non-banking finance company or housing finance company. I will tell you what is this rule. It says provided my question is my logged in shares I am the promoter of the company my logged in shares. Can I keep those shares as collateral? Answer is yes, you can keep. You can keep it with some banks, HFCs, NBFCs. Provided, provided, provided. The loan has been granted to the issuer or its subsidiary. That means the loan is not for the promoter, but the loan is for the company. For the company. And why? For the purpose of financing one or more object of the issue. Object of the issue. Object of the issue. Long story short, I will add a question. Can the securities which has been which is in lock in, yes, due to minimum promoter contribution, yes, due to minimum contribution, can we take loan for that? Answer is yes. But guys need to understand a very simple thing. That is what? 
लोन शुड रेज बाय इश्यूअर प्लस लोन शुड बी फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट वट एवर द ऑब्जेक्ट इज वी हैव टू फुलफिल दैट सो दैट इज द रोल नाउ लेट एस रीड दिस इट से disclosure in a breach prospectus in front cover page again this is a very simple provision it says what section 21 of company act define a breach prospectus now what is a breach prospectus prospectus which is nothing but a summary prospectus as a memorandum containing salient features of the prospectus may be specified by the sebi by making a regulation in this behalf it says what it says 31 341 of sebi icd 2011 abris prospectus shall contain disclosure specifically in annexure 1 part e of uh, schedule 6 of icdr further 331 of company that stipulates that every application form for the purchase of any security of the company shall be accompanied by an abris prospectus so long story short it says what sebi basically came out with a circular which says now we have new abridged prospectus which is in which annexure let me see that annexure 1 we have one more important thing whenever you plan to take the application form the abridged prospectus should be part of that plus there is a change in the cover make sure you change the cover accordingly which is there in the annexure it says what it says a very simple line it says what in order for the further simplify provide greater clarity and consistency in the disclosure across the various document and provide additional and critical information in the abridged prospectus the format for disclosure in the abridged prospectus has been revised and it is placed in annexure a so this will be in an exer a circular shall applicable to all the issuer opening after the date of this circular while disclosure of abridged prospectus shall be in an exer a that has been covered instead of an exer 1 part e of icdr and disclosure of the front outside cover page shall be as per an exer b so long story short every application share application will be with the abridged prospectus and the format is being changed and exer a and then exer b accordingly perfect now it says what next we have a uh, two to three things the very first thing is uh, sebi icdr second amendment now it says what if a company comes up with a public issue less than size of 10000 crore opening on and after 1st of april 2022 with the effect of 1st april 2022 and uh, then it says public issue equal to more than 10000 crore and opening on and after 1st april 2022 with effect from july 1 now well, guys long story short they have basically applied some it says what it says sebi notified which shall come into force some amendments in regulation this 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 is the amendment first the amendment will be applicable to less than 10000 crore which is effective from 1st of april rest of the amendments will be applicable to more than 10000 crore but effective from july 1 long story short we are recording this video for december 2022 examination ultimate in practical and real life it is already been applied yes next is asba so what is this asba story let us understand that so whenever a investor want to invest in an ipo then they have to apply it with the help of scsbs yes that we have syndicate banks we have to apply via them let's take an example i want to apply to the nykaz ipo and i am using my upi now previously what banks used to do bank used to basically whatever the bidding is been received by the investor they used to put up that bidding on the nsc or bsc's website because we have to ultimately update it time to time now guys 
before blocking the money bank used to update on the nsc's website or bsc's website bank was not blocking the money now with this circular banks will have to maintain a clarity with the help of a software that money is blocked first then it has been updated on the website it says what sebi has reviewed the process of application that is asba in public issue by the market intermediary and scsbs as a part of continuing effort to the further streamline of the bidding process and to ensure orderly development of the market this is nothing it says sebi wide circular has provided the asba application in public issue shall be processed only after application money are blocked first money will be blocked in the investor bank account accordingly all intermediaries market infrastructure institutions are advised to ensure the appropriate systematic and procedural arrangement are made within 3 months if the software is not updated make sure you update your software provided provided the stock exchange shall accept the asba application in their electronic book building platform only with the mandatory confirmation on application of money is blocked first money will be blocked and then you will be updating the circular shall applicable to all category of investor retail qib nii reserve categories and all the modes which to the application is processed on and after 1st september 2022 so again long story short long story short is previously bank used to make the entry then used to block but they are basically telling that now you have to block first and then make the appropriate entry there is a change in the rights issue process it is what it says sebi has streamlined the rights issue process by providing the trading in right entitlement now what is this re let's take an example i was holding lnt finance perfect the company announces what company announces rights issue now if you know i can renounce this rights issue to the one who is not the shareholder if i don't want to exercise this right i can renounce this right perfect if i want to renounce this right ultimately i have to find a person who will buy this rights whatever the rate is now guys need not to worry about this this right entitlement will be traded on the recognized stock exchange if you don't want to buy shares under the right issue need not to worry you can sell it off to a person perfect it says what it says on the secondary market platform of stock exchange comments along with the opening of rights issue so when it will be started the comments of trading so comments of trading start one comments of trading start from opening of rights issue opening of rights issue perfect and has to be closed at least 3 days working days prior to the closure so whenever your closure of rights issue closure of rights issue you have to close the trading you have to close the trading 3 days prior now why whoever buy that right entitlement they will ultimately exercise their right in that 3 days perfect it says earlier the requirement was 4 days sebi received representation of the market and in case there are trading holidays in between the last date the re trading day and the issue closure the provision of minimum gap of 4 day may not always ensure there is the adequate days of for settlement as minimum two working days are required for the settlement so ultimately just like the shares you can settle this also but now we'll have 3 days before the closure so that ultimately whoever buy that entitlement can exercise their rights option properly and perfectly now if you see there were so many amendments need not to worry about it i will be writing all these amendments at the end so that ultimately you get the hack of everything so with this we have completed all the amendments of icdr let us start with the next chapter's amendment and the chapter is sast that is takeover code let's say what it says sebi substantial acquisition of shares and takeover third amendment regulation 2021 which came in force on december 6 2021 it says sebi wide notification dated december 6 2021 has notified the sebi substantial acquisition of shares and takeover third amendment regulation 2021 which came into force on the date of their publication in official gazette not important for us but what is the amendment it says 
through this amendment regulation 5A, if you remember 5A is that regulation which talks about delisting. So if you are planning to take over a company and further then delist it, so the procedure is laid down under 5A. The provision is very simple, 5A talks about that, let's take an example if you give an open offer. The maximum offer offer that you can give is 75% because of the shareholding pattern the maximum restriction is on 75 so basically 75% is the maximum amount of shareholding that the acquirer can pursue with the help of their PAC. So wherever you are planning to give a PA so maximum acquisition can be done that is 75% because promoter can hold a maximum 75% and minimum public needs to hold in a listed company. Now guys you need to understand if that promoter intends to delist their shares they have to acquire 90% of their shares yes they have to acquire the 90% of their shares and once the 90% has been acquired the company will be delisted. So with the help of a takeover you can also delist a company for that you have to follow this whole procedure first you have to acquire till 75 then again you have to uh, give one more announcement and then you will acquire till 90% so ultimately we are giving multiple open offers just to delist the company. Now what is the amendment? It says what? The delisting offer inter alia provides that in the event the acquirer makes a public announcement to an open offer for acquiring share the voting rights or control over the target company in sub-regulation 1, 3, 4 or 5. Acquirer may seek delisting of the target company by making delisting offer according to the regulation 5A. So it says what? Provided the acquirer shall declare his intention to so delist the target company at the time of making the public announcement of an open offer as well as the time of making the detailed public statement. A subsequent declaration of delisting or for the purpose of delisting offer proposed to be made shall not be suffice provided further if the open offer is, is an indirect acquisition is not deemed to be direct acquisition of sub regulation 252. The declaration is to intend to delist shall be made initially only in the detailed public statement. Now what is this whole story? The story is important that's the reason I have read everything. The very first thing you should know what is 5A. So 5A is in with the help of a takeover if you are planning to delist your company you can do so. So let me just draw one diagram here itself. So it says what? Let's take an example. If you plan to do takeover but with the help of regulation 5a the rule is very simple if acquirer if acquirer gives the no put offer so the max they can hold is public shareholding pattern they have to follow right this was the whole procedure and then you have to give delisting offer so if an acquirer intends to acquire how much 90% because it is that level where company delists. 90% let me write it delisting levels so 90 or more now you can do this previously there were multiple public announcements just to delist it but now it says you can do this But you have to tell your intention, intention to delist in public announcement and detailed public statement. So if you do this beforehand, so you can just acquire 90% straight away. Long story short, even previously it was allowed, but we have to give multiple announcements now the whole process is now simplified guys the whole process is now simplified previously where we have to give multiple announcements now if you are planning to delist it you can straight away acquire 90 or more 
and deletes the company accordingly. So this is a very beautiful amendment about delisting. They have just made it simple. It says what? Under the earlier framework, if an open offer is triggered, compliance with the takeover regulation in an incoming acquire holding above 75 or perhaps even 90. However, to ensure the compliance with SCRA regulation, that is public shareholding requirement, the acquirer would be forced to first hit his take down to 75. As SEBI delisting uh, equity shares regulation 2021 would not let the acquirer even attempt to delist unless holding first bought down to 75. Such directional contradictory transaction in a sequence pose a complexity in the takeover of a listed company, especially where the acquirer desires to get the company delisted person to takeover. So now at a stretch, you can acquire and delist it, but you have to intend it. You have to make sure your intention is very clear in the DPS and public announcement. Now guys, this two important regulation, what you can see, these are not important. Why? Because it is not there in your syllabus. So ultimately they have mentioned it in our uh, uh, supplement, but it is not there in our syllabus of CS executive. So we're not covering it. Ultimately, there is only one amendment related to takeover. Let us quickly discuss the basic amendments, which is related to securities, market and intermediaries. It's a very beautiful chapter because ultimately we will be able to learn such a huge type of concept there dif where different type of intermediaries are discussed. Now, the amendments are very simple and small and very easy. Let us quickly jump into the very first amendment. It says SEBI Depositories and Participant Amendment Regulation 2022, which came into effect on Feb 23, 2022. So, date is not at all important. Let us understand what is the amendment. It says SEBI has notified SEBI Depository and Participant Amendment Regulation 2020, which shall be come into force uh, on the date of their publication in the official gazette. Again, that is not important. Now, what is the amendment? The amendment is in this regulation number. And what is that? It says SEBI Depository and Participants Regulation 2018. Why this amendment? SEBI has increased the net worth requirement of the stockbroker and register as depository participant and provide that the stockbroker shall have the net worth of 3 crores within 1 year of such notification which shall be increased to 5 crore within 2 years of the date of notification. Now let us understand what is the concept. The concept is they have increased the net worth. So, there is an increment in the net worth. It says what? SEBI has increased the net worth requirement for stock broker to register as DP and provide that stock broker shall have net worth of 3 crore within 1 year of the date of notification, which shall be increased to 5 crore. That means they have increased it to 5 crore. It says what? It says provided further that self-clearing members Fulfilling the net worth requirement as provided under SEBI Stockbroker Regulation 92 shall be eligible to register as depository participant. So, depository participant is nothing but a intermediary, a broker in between. So, let's take an example. If I want to buy a stock of Reliance, so ultimately I cannot go and approach my stock exchanges like NSC or BSC. Ultimately, I need in between a party who will be called as depository participant. Generally, they are called as broker. Now, sir, they have increased their net worth and the net worth is now 5 crore. Sir, my net worth is less because I have already registered as per old regulation. Need not to worry about you have time to increase your net worth to 5 crore. Simple. Easy. Now, let us jump to the next amendment. It says SEBI Stockbroker Amendment Regulation 2022, uh, which came into effect on Feb 23, 2022. SEBI has notified that SEBI Stockbroker Amendment Regulation 2022 shall come into force on the date of publication of official gazette. Again, not important this first line because they are just telling what will be the effective date. It says what? Now it says new clause has been added. And what is that? It says professional clearing member. Professional clearing member has been inserted in the regulation 
which means the member having clearing and settlement rights in any recognized stock exchange or you can say clearing corporation but not having trading rights in any recognized stock exchange. So what is this basic meaning? Every stock broker guys, every stock broker is not only a trading member but also a clearing, clearing member. Now what is clearing member? Let's take an example if I want to buy a stock then how it will be cleared ultimately my cash will be debited and in my demand account the shares will be credited these all things are nothing but clearing corporations work and it has been done by the clearing members example my stock broker is also a clearing member plus a trading member trading member means whenever i buy any stock my broker will help me to buy the stock because they are a trading member Clearing member are the one who basically clear the stock and makes the payment to the party. So ultimately if I am buying Reliance today, my amount will be debited from my trading account and the shares will be credited in my DMAT account. These are all nothing but the clearing task which has been done by the broker itself. Now we have one more important concept which has been introduced as per this regulation or the amendment. It says professional clearing members. Professional clearing members are those bodies or you can say are those people who will be exclusively into this business of clearing and not trading. So it says they will be have they will be not having any trading rights but they will be having power to settle the stocks. So ultimately important concept that is professional clearing members will not have trading rights but yes they will be having a power to do what to basically make sure to clear your stocks now guys you don't know this or not but stock exchanges have their own clearing companies example you can go and search bsc clearing corporation this is nothing but the bsc's clearing corporations company so whatever transaction takes place on bsc it has been cleared by bsc However, you should be member of that company as well. So, next amendment, again, it's a very simple amendment. And what is that amendment? So, they have just included some basic words to understand that. And what is that? SEBI Custodian Amendment Regulation 2022, which says, SEBI has notified SEBI Custodian Amendment Regulation 2022, which shall come into force on the date of their publication in the official gazette. And what is that? It says regulation 2E, the definition of custodial services is amended. Custodial services is amended. And what is that? Custodial services in relation of securities or goods of a client or gold or gold related instrument. Now they have added silver or silver related instrument. Now I don't know this or not, but previously gold, there are various instrument. Everybody wants to buy gold. That's the reason physical gold has been demanded high in India. But you guys need to make sure government is trying to cut down that demand by offering various type of instrument which is replica of gold. So guys, let's take an example. If I want to accumulate gold, I can buy gold in the form of e-gold or I can buy gold with the help of sovereign gold bonds. Now, now guys, I actually don't buy golds, but I hold the underlying whenever the gold rate increases my bond or by instrument rate has been increased. Similarly, we have ETF. What is ETF? Exchange traded fund. Exchange traded fund. Now, what is ETF? Exchange traded fund means what? Exchange traded fund means a very simple thing guys. Come on everybody. That means my funds will be traded on the next stock exchange. Whenever I want to buy, I can buy. Whenever I want to sell, I can sell on the market. Provided there should be a buyer and seller in the market. Now guys, just like gold, now various companies have introduced their silver related instrument. Example, you can say go and check it out the Reliance or you can say the Nippon company, the AMC's asset management company has issued all these ETF. We have Nifty Bees as well. So Nifty Bees is nothing but a ETF on Nifty. Uh, similarly, we have silver related instrument, we have gold related instrument. Now, law says the custodial services not only include gold and gold uh, related instrument, but also silver or silver related instrument, which is being held by the mutual fund or title deeds or real estate asset held by the real estate mutual fund scheme in accordance with the SEBI mutual fund regulation 1996. Means what? The safekeeping of such securities, goods, gold or gold related instrument, silver or silver instrument. So, we have added silver here. Title deeds or real estate assets providing services of incidental debt. What is incidental debt to? Related to that. Incidental means 
related to that. So now we are adding up some basic services. Next is what? Next is regulation need which specifies procedure and to grant certificate. So again, it's the procedural work. A custodian holding a certificate of registration as on the date of commencement of the Securities Exchange Board Custodian Amendment Regulation 2022 may provide custodian services in respect of silver and silver related instrument held by mutual fund only after attaining prior approval of the board. So if you want to hold silver and silver related instrument then you have to take permission from SEBI. Board means SEBI. Perfect. So again this amendment was again very simple. So let me just quickly revise. First amendment says what? First amendment is increased in the net worth. Second amendment was professional trading or you can say the clearing member. So professional clearing member will have no trading right but yes having clearing powers. Then we have a custodian amendment and, and the amendment it has included some silver related products and if you want to do or want to hold a silver related instrument then you take prior approval of the board. Now it says what? SEBI debenture trustee amendment regulation 2022. It is on April 11, 2022. It says what? SEBI on April 11, SEBI on April 11, 2022 has notified SEBI debenture trustee amendment regulation 2022. So the date is not important for us. Which shall come into force on the date of their publication in the official gazette. So these all things are not important for us. Why did notification SEBI has amended the provision of debenture trustee regulation 93 to align with the framework and terminology with the respect of security cover wherein in the term asset cover has been substituted. So already we have discussed what is security cover. So I hope you know that whenever company take or you can raise money with the help of debentures, we used to keep security cover. Now it has been replaced with the help of an asset cover. Now whenever I say asset cover, that uh, whatever the amount has been raised by the company, example 100 rupees, now the asset cover will be not 100 rupees but amount which is more than 100 rupees so that the principal also can be covered. So again this was a very simple, simple, simple easy amendment. If you want just, I will just uh, write the notes as well so that ultimately you have the hack of these things. So I will just uh, write a note of it. So before, one day before the exam you can just uh, read all those things. You can just uh, pause the video and you can take the screenshot or else I will be providing you the downloaded stuff in the comment box. So I will be writing up. So you know don't waste your time by seeing what I am writing. In instead you can just uh, take a screenshot or you can download the file accordingly. Let us start with the amendment of the next chapter. Now it is what? It says amendment which is related to structure of capital market. Now guys this chapter is one of the important chapter. Reason being it comes into part B of your uh, subject. Now it says what? Very first point it says SEBI Portfolio Investors Amendment Regulation 2022 which came into force that is January 14, 2022. SEBI widest notification dated January 14, 2020 has amended the provision of SEBI Foreign Portfolio Investor Regulation 2019. So again till this line it is not at all important because it says the effective date when it has been come in force. Now it says the amendment enables SEBI to generate unique registration number of foreign portfolio investors on receiving the basic details of the applicant seeking FPI registration from either of SEBI registered depositories. Long story short, if a FPI wants to register in India, now you will be getting up a unique registration number. In a similar fashion and similar way, whenever you order anything, be it a Paytm or Amazon or Flipkart, you get your order ID so that the tracking and everything can be done in a very easy way. In a similar fashion, in a similar way, if an FPI wants to register themselves as FPI in India, then in that case, just they will be appointed a unique registration number just to have a detail of their tracking. Let us jump to the next amendment. So first amendment, now FPI who wants to register themselves they will be getting up a unique registration number. Second point, second amendment is what? It says SEBI Foreign Portfolio Investors Amendment Regulation 2022 which came in force on January 14, 2022. 
Yes, it says the amendment inserted in the chapter 3b on a special situation fund. Now, what is this special situation fund? This is important. In the Securities and Exchange Board of India Alternate Investment Funds Regulation 2012. Let us understand what they want to say as it says. Special situation fund means a category 1 AIF. I hope you know AIF are of three category. Category 1, category 2, category 3. Now it says it is category 1 AIF that invest in special situation assets in accordance with the investment objectives may act as a resolution applicant under insolvency and bankruptcy code. Now guys, you can see so much of data here. It says, what is a special situation fund? Special situation fund is a category 1 AIF, everybody. What is a special, special situation fund? What is a special situation fund? A category 1 AIF, category 1 AIF. Now, it says in a special situation, asset covered accordance or investment objective, they can also act as resolution applicant. Now, what is the resolution applicant? Guys, need to focus on this word. Resolution applicant means a person who saves a company who is into the process of CIRP. That is in, in an insolvency process. Let's take one example that is Ruchi Soya. Ruchi Soya is a company which was declared as bankrupt. Now, resolution applicant was Patanjali. Yes, Patanjali who saved this company and paid the creditor of Ruchi Soya. So, it says such kind of fund can act as a resolution applicant. Now, let us come to the next point. It says investment in special fund investment by special funds you can see two important words it says what each scheme of special situation fund shall have a corpus as it may be specified by sebi so important it says special situation fund shall be accept from the investor and investment of such value as may be prescribed now it says special situation fund shall not accept investments from any other alternative investment other than special situation fund. So, long story short, it says where the money will be coming from. Where this money will be used? It says special situation fund shall be invest only in the special situation assets and may act as a resolution applicant. May act as a resolution applicant. Under which law, sir? Under insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016. Now, it says what? However, the special resolution or you can say the special situation fund shall not invest where? In its associate or units of any other AIF other than units of special situation fund. So, you are not allowed to invest in any other AIF other than special situation fund also. Unit of special situation funds managed or sponsored by its manager or associate. So, ultimately, you are not at all allowed to invest in your related party. Now, it says what? The amount. So, it says each special scheme or each scheme of uh, should have a corpus of at least 100 crore. So, the corpus should be 100 crore. Next, it says that the investment value shall be not less than 10 crore from an investor. It says, in case it is an accredited investor, the SSF shall accept an investment value not less than 5 crore. Sir, what is accredited investor? Registered investor. Further, in case investor who are employee or director of such SSF, then they can do the investment of minimum 25 lakh. It says, SSF intending to act as a resolution applicant. SSF intending to act as a resolution applicant under IBC code shall ensure compliance with the eligibility requirement. Now guys, in your CS executive, we don't have this eligibility requirement. In setting up, we have a small part on the bankruptcy, but long so you should follow all this criteria. So, every scheme will have corpus of at least 100 crore, minimum investment 10 crore, but if you are an accredited investor, 5 crore. And if you are the director manager, then I will take 25 lakh from you. If you want to act as a resident professional, then again, you have to ensure the eligibility criteria. 
which is been mentioned under IBC code. It is there in CS final. Now, this this amendment, that is SEBI AIF Second Amendment 2022, is used as for your perspective as it is not there in your syllabus. However, let us understand what it says. It says category 3 alternate investment fund shall not shall invest not more than 10% of the investable amount in an investing company directly or through investment in the units of the EIF. So, you are not allowed to invest more than 10% where in your investing company and large value fund for accredited investors or category 3 AIF may invest up to 20% of investable funds in investing company directly or through investment in units of other alternate investment funds. So, there are two things. First, it says 10% is allowed on investable fund in an investing company directly through investment or in units of AIF. Second, large value fund. There are two things, normal investment and large value investment. So, large value investment for accredited investor is allowed how much? 20%. Again, this is not there in your syllabus. But however, I am just reading it for your sake. It also says provided for the investment in the listed entity, the company, category 3 alternate investment funds may be calculate the investment limit of 10% of either the investable fund of the net asset value or scheme of large value fund. For the accredited investment of category 3 investment fund may calculate the investment limit of 20%. Long story short, this 10-20%, I will be giving you the gist what they want to say us. So, there are very minimal amendments what you can see. Let me just write here. This was which chapters amendment we are discussing. Let us quickly go and check. I think this intermediate is what we were discussing now. So, this is all been done. Intermediate is done. Okay, so we were discussing about the structure of capital market. So, let me just quickly make a note for this. So, let me just write it here. So, it says, market structure. For the amendments, let us, let me quickly write all these amendments. Till that time, you can just fast forward the video into 1x speed perfect now the first amendment was that if a fpi wants to invest or they want to register fpi in india then you will be given a unique number so that you can basically we can track that second was special situation fund now what is this special situation fund let us understand that it is nothing but category 1 AIF sir where they will be investing so they will be investing in investing in special situation assets one thing that need to be taken care of they can also act as a resolution applicant they can be they can also act as Resolution applicants. Simple. Also, the investment in SSF will be having the corpus of minimum hundred crore. And every investor, the investment amount, the minimum investment amount is 10 crore. For accredited investor, it is 5 crore. But if you are an employee or director of SSF, then it is 
25 lakh simple also where they will be investing so by ssf where they will be investing so they will be investing in special situation assets so they will be investing in that plus can act as resolution applicant but you are not allowed not allowed to do what so not allowed to invest in your associate companies units of other AIF not allowed unit of not allowed other than other than SSF so that is also an important criteria you have to also make sure the minimum maximum criteria so this is what the basic thing that you need to take care of the last amendment was not that important but it says the category 3 AIF will do what such an AIF will invest in investi company investi company mean where they are planning to invest so it will be maximum 10 percent yes there are option 10 percent of what so there are two two three things nav of the scheme or you can say so nav of the scheme nav of the scheme also they have investment or investable fund but if you are uh, a category three but you are planning to invest in large value fund that means in listed equity this similar limit will be maximum of 20 percent of the investi company it can be either 20 percent of investable fund or you can say the nav of the scheme this is not that important but yes special ssf that is special situation fund is important for category 1 af also you should know the different categories we have category 1 that is economic and social uh, venture funds they invest the major motive is to invest there now we have category 3 which invest in complex or you can say the startup diverse uh, business models then we have category 2 so category 2 is the one who doesn't cover in 1 and 3 they cover in category 2 so this was an important amendment for market structure let us hop into the next chapter now at the end let us discuss the amendment related to SEBI listing obligation and disclosure requirement regulation 2015 this LODR and says what just quickly understand because this is one of the simplest chapter it says SEBI listing obligation and disclosure requirement amendment regulation 2022 which came in force on January 24 2022 says that SEBI widened its notification dated 24 January 2022 has amended the provision of SEBI listing obligation disclosure requirement regulation 2015 which shall come into force on the date of their publication in the official gazette says what the amendment inter alia provide that the listed entity shall ensure approval of the shareholder for the appointment of the person on the board or as a manager in the next meeting or within the period of three months from date of appointment whichever is earlier so what is this amendment did not to worry i have just made it a shortcut for your guys before the examination if you read it voila your amendments are done so here you go here are the amendments where it is here you go it says what person appointed as manager if you want to appoint a person or a manager or director then you can do so by taking the approval of shareholder sir within what is the time frame so it says within three months or next agm whichever is earlier simple so let us again go back and read the provision and then we'll read it simplify uh, i've already made everything simplified so even before the examination if you read that you're good to go you can write anything okay so let us jump to the again 
the next provision and it says what it says that the appointment or reappointment of a person including managing director or a whole time director or a manager who is earlier rejected by the shareholder at the general meeting shall be done only with the prior approval of the shareholder perfect now it says what again it's a very simple concept it says if a person is been rejected earlier if that person is rejected and we are planning to reappoint that same person then what is the procedure very simple procedure it is easy procedure what is the procedure let us understand so it says if company appoints a person md wdd director who was he is a person who was rejected by the shareholder earlier now if we want to appoint that such same person then we have to take prior approval from the shareholder let us read the simplified one and then we'll go and read it it says what the report of monitoring agencies place should be placed before the audit committee so you know what happened in monetary agency now cras will be acting as a monitoring agency and monitoring agency will have some basic parts and it says whatever the report they prepare it needs to be it needs to be discussed with the audit committee and uh, that is what it is it says where the listed entities has appointed a monitoring agency to monitor the utilization of proceeds of a public or a rights issue the monitoring agency on such agency shall be placed before the audit committee on quarterly basis on quarterly basis now if you read the next one it says issuance of duplicates or new certificates in case of loss or old decrypt or worn out certificates is in dematerialized form so in case if the shares are told mutilated lost you need not to worry you will be getting up a new certificate but only in dmat form it says this will improve ease convenience and safety of transaction for investors let us understand I have just made it again a very simplified one, so need not to worry about it. Let's quickly hop in. It says what? It says fourth point. It says certificate which are old, worn out, torn, etc. The fresh shares will be issued in demand form. Simple. Next, it says request of transfer, transmission, or transposition of security shall be done in demand format only. This is the amendment, easy amendment. I will read it in. Uh, the legal language but I understand the last sixth one because this is the last one it says what now the asset cover shall be cover principal plus interest whenever I say asset cover in the last thing itself I have covered securities market intermediaries in that there is a change in the debenture trustee Previously, when we used to take the venture of 100 rupees, we used to keep a asset cover or you can say the security cover of 100 rupees. But now it says you have to keep an asset cover. Previously, we used to cover only the principal, but now we have to cover princi plus interest. Perfect. Now you have to cover princi plus interest. Let us read these two things, then we will be left with the last amendment so fifth and sixth uh, let us read it in legal format what has been mentioned in the supplements it says what it says the request of effecting transfer of shares shall not be proceed unless the shares are held in dmat format perfect not only that further transmission of transposition of security held in physical or dematerialized form shall be in dematerialized form only so you want to transfer, transmit or you want to transposition of shares, then it will be compulsory done in demand format. So all it has been done. Let us understand this. It says what? It says a very simple thing. That I have covered this. So it says what? SEBI on April 11, 2022 has notified SEBI listing and obligation disclosure requirement amendment regulation 22, which shall come in force on this, this date. Not required says that SEBI has amended the provision of SEBI listing obligation and disclosure requirement regulation 2015 to align the framework and terminology of security cover wherein the term with asset cover has been substituted with the term security cover in regulation 54 perfect it says what further it prescribed that the maintenance of security cover it should not only cover the principal but interest thereon so these all things has been covered let me read out this second also it says SEBI has notified the SEBI listing obligation that is disclosure obligation requirement amendment second amendment it says what 
which shall come into force in the date of publication of official gazette. So, this is not important. It says SEBI wide this notification has omitted regulation 17 1b which is related to separation of role of chairman and MD and CEO. It is provided that this provision shall not be retained as a mandatory requirement, but it said it shall be made applicable to uh, you can say optional or you can say optionally applicable to listed entities. Previously, 17 1b was applicable compulsorily, now it is being made voluntary basis. So, that is again not that uh, difficult, but yes, let us understand this important star exam topic. It says simplification of procedure and standardization of format of documents, issuance of duplicate certificates. Before we read this, what is there? Let us understand in a simplified format what I have already mentioned here. And what is that? It says a very simple statement. Here you go. Yes, procedure for duplicate share certificate. Now we have made this procedure a very simple procedure. It says first procedure is to file FIR or EFIR or a copy of plaint or any other document which shows that your certificate has been lost. Publish it in the newspaper. Now it says the above point that is first and second point is not applicable if the value of shares is less than 5 lakh because sir the, the securities value is very less 5 lakh rupees and you will do all this thing ultimately you will tend to spend more. That says what? It says one need to submit affidavit and indemnity bond which need to be submitted to the company. Share will be delivered in a DMAT format. However, it says what? However, if a person is not aware about the certificate number or folio number, then they can approach their RTA. What is RTA? Register and transfer agent to get their details. So, we have so many companies that is linking time and so on and so forth. Big share. These are some example of RTAs. What I have covered in the full-fledged lectures. Well, let us read that in uh, legal language and it says what? It says that with the view to make the issuance of duplicate certificate more effective and efficient for the investor and investor friendly, SEBI has simplified the procedure and documentation requirement for the issuance of duplicate certificate. The requirement are as follows. It says submission of security holder or a copy of FIR. So, I have already covered you have to give me an FIR or EFIR, police complaint, court injunction order, copy of plaint necessarily having details of securities folio distinct number that yes your certificate has been lost. Next issuance of certificate or you can say advertisement regarding the loss of security in a widely circulated newspaper however there shall be no requirement to comply with the provision of para 1 and para 2 if the value of uh, the security the rate of submission of application along with the complete documentation prescribed by the SEBI does not exceed 5 lakh. So already covered. Submission of affidavit and indemnity bond as for the format prescribed by the SEBI. There shall be no requirement of submission of surety of issuance of duplicate certificate. So, again, fourth point says if in case of non availability of security, distinctive number, folio number, the RTA upon the written request of the security holder shall provide the same to the security holder only where the signature and the address of the security holder matches with the RTA or the listed company's record. In case the signature or the address does not match, the security holder will comply with the KYC procedure and then the detail of security will be provided to security holder by the RTA. This is a very simple thing. The very first thing, if you don't know the details, I will be giving you if, we, if the signatures and the address matches. If doesn't match, then you have to do the KYC process and then we will be issuing you the basic details. Again, the duplicate share will be issued in DMAT format only. So again, with this, we have completed all the amendments which is related to December 2022 examination. My sincere request is to watch this video in 1.25 speed or 1.5 x speed so that you can cover these things very quickly. Again, I will be attaching all the amendments what you can see in a simplified format even before the examination. If you read that, it is suffice. They're good to go, guys. So make sure you have this amendment sheet. I will be pinning up. I have written everything. So, whenever you are planning to read it, we have a ready made notes for you. So, make sure uh, you download it from the pin comment. Also, share it with your friends. Do well in the examination. Make sure you attempt the 100 marks paper. Don't panic in the examination. Do well in the exam. Bye bye. Take care and all the best.